It's in one of the most dramatic scenes in the Torah. Our patriarch Jacob is on his way home after 20 years, 34 years of being away, 20 years in Choron. And now he's coming home with his wives, his children, his family. He crosses the river Yabok. The family lays down to sleep. Jacob is left alone in the still of night where he encounters an ish, a strange man. Who was it? Our sages tell us it was the angel of his brother Esau, Esau. Together they fought all night long. And as the dawn started to rise, the angel of Esau injured the sciatica nerve of Jacob's right leg. For that, the Torah tells us, the sciatica shall forever be forbidden for the Jew, for a Jew to consume from an animal as an eternal reminder of this injury sustained by Yaakov on that fateful night. The question is, of course, what is the significance of the place of his injury and why is this incident eternalized in this manner. One of the commentaries on the Torah, the Sefer HaChinuch, says that the message that the Torah is conveying here is that this was a forerunner for Jewish history that would be replete with battles, battles between the generational Jacobs and Esau's. At times, leaving us injured, limping, down, but never out. As the Torah records that as Jacob rose and limped away, the sun rose, and with that, his healing began. And so there may be times when circumstances cause us to limp, but we must always remember that the sun shall rise again and healing is always around the corner. What is astonishing here is that a message that is so resonant throughout Jewish history should be memorialized and eternalized through a seemingly superfluous aspect of the story and that we should be prohibited for all time to eat the sciatica nerve on the hind quarter of the animal and Jewish law is very very specific it, the restriction the prohibition is only the sciatica nerve itself not the area above not the area below a very very small area in the hind quarter of the animal the Rebbe draws a beautiful takeaway from that too and that is that in God's world and in God's view no detail is ever too small no detail is ever overlooked. The sciatica nerve may seem to be incidental to the story, but that carries with it a great and important historical message. Because from God's view, what to us may appear to be insignificant or small, packs something far greater than we may otherwise perceive or imagine. It's sort of like the difference between a builder and an interior designer. A builder sees a structure. An interior designer sees all of the details within that structure and how each one complements the other. And nothing escapes the discerning eye of the interior designer. No detail is too small. And the Torah is telling us here that this minor detail of the sciatica is a reminder that there is nothing in God's world that is superfluous. Nothing is overlooked. Nothing is insignificant. This past Sunday, I was at the beach together with my family, and we were marveling at how a seagull was flying over the water and looking down for its prey, a fish, and how 
upon identifying it, it made a nosedive into the water and out came the fish. And it reminded me of the story recorded in the Talmud, Tractate Chulin, about Rabbi Yochanan, who observed the very same thing that we did by the seashore. And when he saw that, he exclaimed, Mishpatecha tohom rabah, your judgments, God, are very deep. They extend even to the deep, to the depths of the sea. And what he was saying was that the fact that this particular bird plucked this particular fish out of the sea at that particular moment is all divinely orchestrated. If that's true of a bird and a fish, then this is surely true of the events of our lives, that they are all part of God's plan, and that we must therefore perceive and understand the significance of everything that happens in our lives and in our world, and not overlook the opportunities that they bring with them. We are in the midst of a pandemic, and God willing, soon there will be a vaccine and the healing, the sun will rise just like it did for Jacob. But we will always remember this time and we must utilize this time for the opportunities that it presents now, for the way that it challenges us right now in our own lives and not wait for it to be over and then things will get back to normal and then I'll start living life again because every day is a gift from God.